Hey guys, welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to review the Samsung Galaxy J7 Pro. So let's start with the specifications of this phone. So this phone right here is running on Octa-Core Exynos processor and this is the same processor that was present in J7 Prime last year so no changes there. And then it has got 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage. Uh, some other variants also have 64 gigs of internal storage so that's good. Uh, you also have the ability to add an SD card in this phone uh, of up to 128 gigs and it has got 5.5 inch AMOLED full HD display here as well and then um, there is a fingerprint scanner and the home button here we have got a 13 megapixel back and front camera with an aperture of f1.7 in the rear camera and f1.9 in the front camera we have this beautiful hardware so it's all metal and then you can see the antenna bands and the camera module is flushed right inside so there is no bump there it looks uh, premium it feels premium and uh, there is much more uh, substance to it this time and it definitely feels uh, like a premium phone in the hand and this beautiful hardware is complemented by the beautiful software here as well so this phone is running on android nougat 7.0 and it has the same exact software as we saw in samsung galaxy s8 so there are a ton of improvements here it's fast it's fluid so you get the same launcher here so you know you swipe up to get to the app drawer and you swipe down to get to the app drawer so there is that and then you get the same notification shortcuts same settings you also get the same camera app here as well so a ton is going on here and there is a lot of improvements uh, in J7 Pro that were unexpected and they are like a you know a breath of fresh air and they simply you know makes the user experience on this phone uh, you know great and you feel like you're using a high-end phone because the software feels like that the hardware feels like that now let's talk about the battery life so battery life in this phone is again great it's running on 3600 mAh battery and it takes you through the day very easily no problems at all i've been getting like five to six hours of screen on time uh, without a hitch every day and still having uh, 15 to 20 percent battery left at night you really have to use this phone quite a lot to kill its battery in one single day if you're a heavy user of your phone you don't have to worry about it uh, it has got you covered because the battery life is just excellent and then there is a standby time which is also great so if you're not using your phone it will not lose any battery points while it is resting so you can pick up right where you left off and just go on uh, with your phone so there is that and then there is the camera uh, the camera again as with all samsung phones is great the camera takes very beautiful bright saturated uh, sharp photos and then we've got some modes here so we've got auto pro panorama continuous short hdr night mode sport sound and short and then we have got some filters here as well and then we have got settings here as well so i've got a whole video about the camera review of this phone i'll link that up you can watch that video uh, and the samples are there as well so you can take a look at that but the camera takes beautiful photos and since the aperture of the rear camera is f1.7 it takes beautiful low light photos as well so now let's talk about the fingerprint scanner in the home button here so it's a very good and very reliable fingerprint scanner it's fast and it works almost every time so um, here is a comparison between Samsung Galaxy J7 Pro and my OnePlus 3D. Now OnePlus 3D has got one of the fastest fingerprint scanners uh, although the one on mine has slowed down because of you know I've been using it for over 5-6 uh, months now so anyways here is a quick comparison between the fingerprint scanners so there you go very competitive and almost exactly uh, you know they take the same time to unlock the screen and there you go that's the fingerprint scanner now you can register up to three fingerprints with this uh, scanner and that was a bummer because uh, three is kind of low most uh, android phones would let you register up to five fingerprints so here uh, unfortunately you can only register three fingerprints let me go ahead and show you so there you go now I've got three fingerprints here and there is no way to add more fingerprints so there is that it's um, I don't know um, you know maybe some decision taken by Samsung in their corporate offices but uh, three is kind of low I wish there were more at least five and then uh, you cannot 
lock your apps with this fingerprint scanner and this should have been built right into the phone so that you can use this ability to lock your apps with the fingerprint scanner yes you can download third party apps from the play store that does the same thing but having the feature in your phone built in is something else you know it just it's just more streamlined and it's more useful and it's just more straightforward to use but anyways that's also missing here now this phone also supports samsung pay so there is nfc here as well so there you go just turn it on and if you're in a country that has samsung pay you can use this feature to make payments with the samsung pay as well now there is one more thing that i want to talk about and mention specifically and that is the multitasking features on this phone and they take a lot from the samsung galaxy s8 once again so it has got a huge screen so this is 5.5 inch amoled panel and you can make use of the screen with the multitasking on this phone so basically what you need to do is just go in settings and in settings um, go in advanced features and here go in multi window now here you've got two type of options split screen view action and pop up view action so basically split screen view action uh, lets you use two apps side by side and pop up view action allows you to you know uh, pop up apps in a smaller windows on the screen so basically this is the settings app so if i just swipe from the corner upper left or right corner that would reduce the screen size so basically this is the uh, pop-up window and then i can minimize it as well and um, it would just float like this on screen and i can use any other app and then just you know summon it and then use it as well so that's the uh, pop-up window and then there is split screen view action so all you need to do is just uh, long press on the recent button here and it will launch the uh, split screen view and then you can launch any other uh, supported app alongside it so if i launch camera so there you go camera is launched so now i can take photos with it so multitasking is a very powerful tool on this phone so if you are a fan of multitasking you will enjoy that feature on this phone as well okay so now let's talk about some of the bad stuff about this phone and on the top of my list is the low internal storage so the unit that i have here has got 16 gigs of internal storage and you get only 8 gigs to work with so the rest of the 8 gigs is used by the firmware and uh, pre-installed apps so 8 gigs is kind of really really low so if you are thinking of buying this phone at least go for 64 gigs of internal storage if you can find that unit i wasn't able to do that uh, here in my country so go for that one don't go for this one because 16 gigs and then you get only 8 gigs to play around with yes you can add an sd card but if someone doesn't want that uh, 8 gigs is kind of really really low in 2017 anyways uh let's uh move on to the next bad bad thing about this phone and that is the lack of fast charging now this phone is around 320 dollars and 320 325 dollars and uh there is no fast charging here and there is no usb type c here and then it's already edging into the a series samsung a 2017 series you can get an a5 in almost the same price and that phone has got fast charging so why would you go for this one uh but anyways there is no fast charging and then uh since the battery is huge there is 3600 mAh battery in this phone and it takes a lot of time to charge and then there is no ip68 rating here as well which is kind of unfortunate because again as i've already told you that it's edging into the price range of a5 2017 and that phone has got water resistance as well so um at least samsung could have done that or could have lowered the price uh, to make it more competitive but anyways so no fast charging no waterproofing here and uh, then uh, the speaker yeah i want to mention the speaker here it's really really weak it's tinny and uh, the sound is not full so if you are planning on watching multimedia on this phone better use headphones because this speaker is not good at all there is this one feature that i always look forward to and which i think is really useful which is absent in this phone and that is the scrolling screenshot so it cannot take long screenshots like facebook pages or twitter pages or whatever so you don't have that ability here for some reason because other samsung smartphones have that uh, feature but for some reason it's missing here which i really miss because i use that feature a lot now whether you should buy this phone or not so if you want a very good Samsung experience with a wonderful hardware, beautiful software, great camera and excellent battery life, 
go ahead and get this phone just make sure that you get the 64 gig version because 16 gigs is not good and you only get 8 gigs to play around with so there you have it guys that was the review of samsung galaxy j7 pro if you have any questions let me know in the comments so you can catch me up on twitter and i'll see you in the next video guys till then take care bye bye